The vote to create the High Galactic Empire of Sindar is officially on the table. Is that what we're going to call it? I don't know. Maybe. It's headcanon for now. Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more- whoa, map screen. Let's play some more Stellaris Galactic Paragons in our High Dominion 2 series. So, we do have that vote on the table, and holy crap, Attacking energy deficit. Vessels. I'm guessing because of the pirates that just showed up. Thankfully we have a patrol literally moving through the sector, and then we're good to go. So that should fix that problem relatively quickly, but that is quite a deficit nevertheless. I'll have to keep an eye on that. We have a number of terraforming projects underway, and we have more to commence. Let's see if there's anything I can immediately do here. You... Hmm. Yeah, I could upgrade the hyper entertainment forms, and that would actually give that particular pop something to do. But that's really the only thing I can do on that planet. Kartha... Yeah, let's let's do a couple of things here. Let's get another generator district going. We have a number of upgrades processing that were just ordered. It's going to take a considerable amount of time, hopefully not too long. But these are <laughs> not small upgrades. Matter of fact, we have the mega shipyard here in Sugenia. Let's go ahead and Yep. I'm going to order all of my other fleets to the mega shipyard and hopefully because of the just sheer number of shipyards there we'll be able to get that done a little bit faster. Now I have also some extra energy credits. I want to make sure I use them. So, let's see here. done and we'll keep a close eye on it because we are making plenty more energy every single month when we don't have piracy issues commercial pact has been broken between the coalition of drill war and the zaplo interstellar league yeah okay so we still have mm, a little bit over three years before this vote goes through but literally the only ones that oppose this are the sagittarian alliance which is very fascinating to me all right, so now we're in even better position. Let's go ahead and build this starbase in Egg Week. And can I go ahead and give the order? Yes, I can. Let's get that terraforming. We have so much colonizing to do, it is not even funny. All right, so these guys are ready. Let's go ahead and give the order. Perfect. Yeah, you can tell. Oh my god, yeah, look how much faster it is. And with any luck, you'll actually see the power of these fleets increase. I can already see this one climbing as the, yeah, as the upgrade finishes. Because they were really hyper-specialized before, and this is going to help it go a lot more smoothly, I think. So this one, the fourth star, or, sh or the fifth, maybe, should start upgrading any second. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so the second's almost done, and as that one finishes... Basically, every shipyard can process one update at a time. Ooh, looks like we might have a nanite shortage of some kind. Not sure why. Vessels upgraded. I mean, I get that by... What's this? The Republic of Hydor has declared us rivals. Okay. Yeah. Good luck with that. Karthasht. We have some opportunities here. Actually... Pretty good opportunities. Let's go ahead and build a city district so that we can have some more amenities there. And then Serpta. A couple of things. Yeah, agriculture district. Not a bad idea. Schlarg. Might need the same thing. Let's go ahead and do that. Sorry, I'll never get tired of saying that name. I realize it's a little bit silly that, silly that I giggle at it every time, but I can't help it. Especially given that we have two of them. The planet of Schlarg. Let's upgrade the Cyto Revitalization Centers, and then Harkoon Lina. 
still with the job issues. I suppose the solution is let's build a couple of agriculture districts. Those will have two jobs a pop and then maybe we can do a couple of mining districts and then see where the chips fall when that's done. Oh yeah. The third star order is almost up to, there it is, 70k. And it's not even fully reinforced. So my fleet is in good shape at this point. I'm very happy. Now some of these upgrades, I'm going to go ahead and guess because I know Vessels upgraded. the order was given to reinforce some of these fleets shortly before I sent them to upgrade. So I think it's pretty likely that we will have to hit the upgrade button twice on at least one of these fleets. And that's fine. I kind of understand that aspect of the system as frustrating as it is. I wish it was a little different, but sometimes you have the lesser of two evils, I suppose. Republic of Tallow has vanquished an ancient threat in the distant Dwemgar system. Okay. There are still so many more things that I want to do. We have this barren world here that God, costs 15,000 to terraform that. I do have enough to potentially terraform another one of these ones, though. So let's go ahead and do that. Mining station, research station. Let's terraform you. Terraform you. And terraform you. There we go. And make it nice and snappy. Like the rest of your terraforming projects. We'll do another agriculture district there. And Tirgosh can do another agriculture district. So it seems like because of the sheer amount of just rapid population growth, and also because we're running nutritional plenitude, food is actually a little bit of an issue at the moment. I'm not hugely surprised. If I'm being completely honest. All right, first this order just climbed. Yep, here it is. We have to upgrade this one a second time. However, it won't take long. It might go above 71K by the time it's done, though. It's already looking like that's the case. Oop. That's a pretty major upgrade for ESCOG there. Economy really starting to show signs of spinning up, which is good to see. Buy some minerals, and then here, yeah, gene clinics. Should have had those a while ago. Also, and okay, we finally have the vaults of knowledge here again. I don't know to what extent that's actually helping. Okay, so that upgrade's done. I want you to reinforce. I want you to reinforce. You can reinforce. All right. So now I can actually expand the council, believe it or not. All right, so I can create the high ambassador, which is good timing, to be honest. Merc, daughter of Jerk, can be promoted to the council. Now, she does have a negative trait. The Oracle is currently head of research. I'm kind of tempted to bring in a new leader, you know? Rather than have Merc, daughter of Jerk, do it. But I don't have any within my cap. So how old is Merc, daughter of Jerk? She's 134. You know what? You know what? Let's just, we're gonna get this leader experience gain boost. The council agenda speed, you know, penalty sucks. But Merc Daughter of Jerk, she's 134. She's not going to be around that much longer. You know? Let's just go with it. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned a while ago, I didn't actually have the opportunity. Yeah, and now I don't have it at all. I didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of the colonization settings that I picked.
resources from psionic pops and research speed psionics plus 10 percent nice let's go ahead and select psionic supremacy i like that idea that works out for me how are we doing over here yeah these fleets are starting to look upgraded. plenty strong i love it and this one looks like it might climb above 70k as well although Vessels it still upgraded. needs some reinforcement this one will be reinforceable now. There we go. Oh, wow. There's still more that it can do. Okay. Okay, so... We have this alpine world here. I need to start giving some orders. So let's colonize. Founder species only. I will go ahead and buy one colony ship's worth. Just one. Trappist. Let's go with just Trappist Secundus. That's fine. I'm alright with that. We've pretty much run the gamut of random names that are usable with this names list, so I'm happy with what we've got. Alright, let's go ahead and reinforce you. Almost done rebuilding these fleets. It's so nice. Just the thought that soon I won't have to worry as much about reinforcing these, you know, fleets constantly is really nice. How am I doing exactly on nanites? I'm actually losing 0.9 per month. How is that exactly? I'm not sure. I have a building that's consuming them. Did I build a nanite transmuter somewhere? I don't remember building a nanite transmuter somewhere. So I'll have to take a look into that. Let's go ahead and improve that gene clinic. And then Rausenbola... Yeah, another agriculture district for you. Wegri can build a mining district. Cure fast. Oh yeah, we have so many planets with systems or with defense systems that need to be upgraded. So many systems, rather. And in some cases, planets. Like the ring world that we started off looking at at the beginning of this episode. But that one doesn't have defenses set up yet. All right, let's do energy credits from jobs. It's not the ideal choice. Oh, wait. Wait. What just finished upgrading? Huh. I don't know why all of my ships would be saying that they want to upgrade right now. I won't complain too loudly, but I just, I don't know why. Let's go ahead and colonize here. And we can... And something just ate up some Vessels of my alloys. Upgraded. That's very rude. Vessels upgraded. All right, let's see if we can actually get it to work there. There we go. Yeah, see, these are all names that have that we've seen multiple times. So let's just go with Sezatov Prime. Going to start using just the default names in most cases because it doesn't seem like Vessels I have too much upgraded. choice at this point. Vessels oh, you know what it might be? It might be that some of the reinforcements I described actually arrived. That's probably it. Okay, it looks like we're mostly at full strength. Colonization in progress. Okay. Council election will be held in 66 days. Yeah, okay. Whatever you want. A little bit over a year and the empire will be established. And you won't be relevant anymore. So, you know. Alright, there we go. I think that is all the reinforcement I'm going to need. 
And now it really is just a matter of thinking about, you know, do I want to attack these guys? One thing I want to look at, we're going to take a look at research options here. Jump drive. Just still trying to figure out what penalty we might have from jumping into Dacha the way that I've been planning. After a long and tiring search, a secret lever hidden under the floor was found which provided access to the fourth chamber. As before, alien glyphs adorned the wall above yet another door. Those who wish to parlay with Zarklon must find their way first. There is, in each chamber, a hidden key that must be turned to proceed. The purpose of these challenges will soon be revealed. Remarkable. All right, now, interestingly enough, I think some of these, yeah, this continental world, I can probably go ahead and, like, terraform this. Not right now, but soon. I might have some resources I can put into place here. Can't do anything about the nanites, though. Let's do a slave processing facility there, just to help keep things in order. Where is the Terminal Egress station? Right here. Let's have you guys upgrade as well. I'm actually surprised I don't have any defenses set up here at Demon's Maw. But now that I'm finally done building ships, do I want to put ships on different sides of the Empire for now? Well... Speaking of the Empire, things are about to pretty dramatically change shape in 239 days, so maybe where I put my ships doesn't matter for the time being. Let's see how things go. I'm just looking forward to annihilating the Coalition of Jarell War, I'm not going to lie. As soon as I have enough alloys, I'm going to try to Space life form encountered. get some additional um, wonders under construction. We have lots of options, things that we haven't actually gone for yet. Vessels upgraded. And it's past time that I start working on some of those. All right, I'm also going to... Oh, hello. We have some Zro there. We'll build a hyper Vessels relay. Upgraded. We have an arid world here that is colonizable. Let's go ahead and give the order. Founder species only. Oh. Yeah, it's an arid world. I don't know what I'm thinking. Let's terraform you first. There we go. Alpine world. All set. Hi, Ambassador Merc, daughter of Jerk, served the Empire for 93 years. Vanished from the public eye without a trace. That's one way to go, I guess. Well, now we have a new leader slot, and we can pick someone who's much better suited to the task. Ooh, a happiness boost. That seems like a good idea. Killed son of Tig. Do it. All right, so we've got that. Leader acquired. Pugrenan Colony is ready for an upgrade, so let's do an agriculture district there. Unu Anpada is probably ready for another industrial district. Let's do that. so wish that I could just annihilate them. But we have 30 days. Let's see how this goes. This is going to be interesting. Elven Prime embraces cybernetics. Disconcerting. 
Alright, Lepicata. Let's go ahead and build a slave processing facility there. We'll probably need one of those on most of our planets. Because we have relatively large slave populations. We've literally conquered like four different civilizations at this point and enslaved them. The first galactic imperium. It is the dawn of a new order. The old galactic community has been dismantled, and in its place, the first galactic imperium has risen. After claiming our rightful place on the throne of this new pan-galactic state, we are now known as the Imperial Core. In a lavish coronation ceremony broadcast across the entire galaxy, a new imperial dynasty was established when Aturian was crowned galactic emperor on New Sindar. That is the most satisfying sentence I have read in Stellaris since I brought the channel back. Holy shit. Long live the Galactic Emperor, long live the Imperium. So, we've just gained 250 influence outright. The Galactic community is now known as the Galactic Imperium. We are now known as the Imperial Core. We now have the Galactic Sovereign Civic. Our ethics have radically, radically shifted towards authoritarianism. Imperial member states can no longer wage offensive wars against us. Available council position. All right, so... <laughs> Aturian is the Galactic Emperor. What the heck? All right, so... Oh! Hang on, there's this civic Galactic Sovereign. This society has achieved mastery over much of the galaxy, serving as the current rulers of the Galactic Imperium. Monthly influence plus six, diplomatic weight plus 40%, available envoys plus one, civic slots plus one. Allows the unlocking of council position, watcher of, the, watcher of the Imperium, Empire effects per skill level, base intel level plus two, infiltration speed plus two percent. All right, so it looks like space born life on. Unpause for a minute. The Havente Unified Worlds can now use the Imperium Cassus Belly against us. That's cute. It looks like the Mephishotans. That's really interesting. Alright, I might have to let some more time pass for some of this stuff to, to play out. But so far... It's us and the Soran Stellar Industries. Oh yes, that's right, we have this Imperial Authority mechanic. Alright, no situations to focus on. Let's go ahead and assign another Envoy. As I can. I need to figure out where that one nanite is going, but we're not going to do it just yet. Alright, so we have the Galactic Empire in place. <laughs> so, current Imperial Authority is 100, change per month is 0, and, it, and then we basically need to assign envoys to it. I forgot about that. Let's assign an envoy to strengthen the Imperium. We can't undermine our own authority. We'll have to pay very close attention. Now, I should have some resolutions which are available to me. Black Imperium. All right, so the Imperial Council is by election. And I could abolish the Imperial Council at some point. We could launch an Imperial <laughs> Crusade once we have more support. Once we have a lot more support, we can launch the Pax Galactica. Members of the Imperium, including its ruler, may not declare war on each other out, uh, aside from trials of advancement. 
Imperial institutions, so we can institute the Imperial Armada. We can institute the Imperial Legions. And we can also give Soran Stellar Industries an Imperial Charter. That's interesting. I don't know if I want to do that right now. All right, so far, that I might, like I said, I might need to unpause it a bit more for like things to develop. But there's a surprisingly low number of other empires. Crown Prince talks it all with new heir to our empire and will take the throne when the current ruler dies. All right, we have more available positions, so I need to think about that. Crown Prince talks it all. Wait, wait, what? Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Why does talks it all look just like a Tyrion? I'm so confused. This is fantastic, but what? Also, he has a pending trait pick. What the hell? Yeah, let's just give him better logistics understanding out of the gate. All right, available council position. Let's reinstate Keeper of the Vaults. And we're going to have Merc, Daughter of Utin, be Keeper of the Vaults. And then we're going to reinstitute the... Yeah, let's actually institute the Watcher of the Imperium and have Kaisha as Watcher of the Imperium. Hell yeah. All right, and then the Grand Storyteller. All right, so that new council position that we set up not long ago, it's not going to matter. So we can have the Crown Prince be Grand Storyteller. This is ridiculous. Also, why am I over one leader? What the hell? Hold on. Leaders. Which one? Leaders. There we go. F7. Yeah, killed son of Tig is no longer actually being used for anything. So let's go ahead and fire him. <laughs> we don't need him anymore. Oh my goodness. Okay, so... What can I... Let's just take a moment to see what I can do now. They're the overlord of the coalition of Jarel War. Nothing I'm really doing is really making a dent with the Mephishiotan Imperium. I think it's just because they're so powerful relative to us. I mean, they're not, they're not more powerful, but they have enough relative power that we're not able to really hold sway over them. So that... I mean, cool. We got the, we got the Galactic Empire going, but... I was expecting... I thought that everyone that voted in favor of it would join it. Which was like mostly everyone, right? And that's not what happened at all. So now we got our work cut out for us. All right, so we have a lot of colonizing to do. Let's go ahead and get that done. Um, first of all, I need to build more hyper relays in various places. You have no orders. I need you to build one there. Once you're done building that mining station, I want you to build one there. Then we have this barren world, which we can't do anything with right now. We have a lot of colonizing, so hang on. 
Already got colonies going up over there. We have some uncollected trade value to attend to as well, like a lot of it. Really, the colonies I need to worry about most are these. So let's go ahead and select. Yeah, I'm just, I'm going to use their default names and I'm going to go for the largest colonies. Matter of fact, let's go all in and use the expansion planner. And then we have backs, which I'd completely forgotten about. That's why the expansion planner is so freaking useful. Dora and our tour. Norberg three. All right, now we are actually missing a few resources. So let's go ahead and buy some more food and looks like consumer goods as well. Norberg prime. Uh, this is going to be expensive to have this many colonies starting at once. But especially if we have a situation with the other empires waking up. And if we're going to need to throw our weight around as the Galactic Imperium. Ugh, okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to need as much of an economic machine humming behind us as we can possibly arrange. So we have a defensive pact with you. We have a commercial pact with you. Despite all of that, And I'm already improving relationships with you, or relations with you too. So there's just not a lot that I can do at the moment. Um, one thing I could do potentially in order to improve relations. Diplomatic stance right now is still belligerent. War exhaustion gain is reduced. Naval capacity is increased by 10%. So hang on. Let's take a look at this. Belligerent, yeah. I know that belligerent is 10%, but... I don't know, like, is 10%... Is it 10% of the base? Because if that's the case, then we're really just looking at two more. But it seems like it might be 10% of the total. All right, so cooperative would reduce border friction, which helps. But operations become more expensive. It would also improve diplomatic weight. And envoys sent to improve relations would have 50% more of an effect. Uh, I'm in comfortable noises. Okay. Um... Oh, man. I'm in part thinking and in part enjoying The Awakened because this is one of absolute like this is one of my all-time favorites from the Solaris soundtrack. It never ever gets old and it just I can't help but wonder if Andreas was like there's a gallop to this track and it just feels like it was inspired by horses. Anyway, sorry. That's a tangent. See, now you're going to hear it. You won't be able to unhear it. See? There's a gallop to it. It's cool. So that's why I like listening to it. Man, there is just so much that I want to do at once right now. Like my attention is pulled in 20, mean, 20 million different directions. I have a decent amount of alloys, but not that much. All right, so we may, honestly, 
we might just have to declare war on the Mephishotan Imperium in order to take the Coalition of Jarel War, which is kind of ironic because we're going to have to attack the Overlord to get to the, the Coalition, which is like turning the tables on what they tried to do with us for the entire game. <sighs> the chaos doesn't stop. I was hoping to just annihilate them independently, and that clearly is not going to work. Hang on, one other thing that I can make sure that I do is ensure... Yeah, see, you're currently building a Hyper Relay. Let's go ahead and put you in position so that additional Hyper Relays... I want any ships traveling in that direction, like back and forth between that area and down here. Like, I want them to be able to move quickly back and forth. All right, Cloak Fleet's detected. That's lovely. Now, what the heck fleet is this 18th star order uh excuse you it's like a bunch of reinforcements that I built ended up in another fleet I don't I never wanted this first second third fourth fifth sixth Seven, eight, and then the salvage fleet, which has been on patrol for a while. So yeah, where did you come from, and what what even are you? I'm, I'm deleting you. You shouldn't exist. I know that's a little bit harsh because I could use those ships, but at the same at the same time, like those have upkeep costs. It's like discovering a bunch of ships that have been built, you know, without authorization. Like, seems harsh, but at the same time. If they shouldn't exist, then maybe they just need to be deleted. Okay, well, I've got some head scratching to do, to be honest, because we have a lot to do in a short period of time. The fallen empires that are waking up haven't really made any noise, but I feel like they're about to. And that's one of the reasons that I'm so, like, trepidatious right now. Like, I feel... Like, I'm going to have to declare war on the Mephishotans in order to get them into the Imperium and to get the Coalition of Drell War into the Imperium and just and then just kill all of them, which is what I'm going to do. Like, they're... <sighs> I might even build a Colossus just to blow up their homeworld, to tell you the absolute truth. Matter of fact, is there a Citadel? There is a Citadel somewhere. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to find you. I know for a fact there's at least one citadel in this empire. Yeah, the Sagara Station. Colossal Assembly Yards. Let's do this real quick. There's a couple of really important ships we're going to be able to build there. We have a bunch of colony ships building at the Terminal Egress Station, and they're going to go directly to the various stations out here. And you can tell that this is mostly, like, this entire effort is mostly complete. So, yeah, in the next episode, I'm going to I'm gonna have a think in between episodes here and, you know, sort of... pretty much prioritize the things that I want to do most. Because I don't know what's going on with the Fallen Empires. The Mephishotans are going to have to be dealt with, and I've been trying to cozy up to them for a long time now. And I just have to wrap my head around the fact that most of the galaxy is still not in the Empire, even though most of them voted for it. So I, I kind of have to like figure out what happened there, because that's still throwing me off. And I still have to defeat these guys, which involves getting the jump drive which will involve potentially inviting the unbidden. So there are a lot of kind of precarious variables in play on top of all the colonization I have to do and the wonders that I need to build and the economic stability that I need to continue to cultivate. So the <laughs> true game of empire management has now kicked into full force. If you're wondering why Stellaris has recently added a co-op mode for empire management where multiple players can manage one empire, this is why 
this is why. Because imagine in this situation, any game, not this game specifically, but any game where things get this complicated, and especially when you have an empire that's spanning an entire galaxy or has multiple vassals or has multiple priorities going on, actually being able to divide those priorities between different players controlling the empire is a really cool idea. Since I don't have that, I'm going to take a beat. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day, but Thursday at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.